This is how energy trading works. Producers and traders go through thousands of transactions a year, banks pony up the short-term loans, and there's lots and lots of paperwork. Lots of companies want to change that. Like VAC, a digital platform that processes deals, a trade between two oil parties that agree on the same terms and conditions, then share their market data, which forms the backbone of the central ledger. And Congo, a blockchain-based platform that provides the financing. And Data Gumbo, a platform for oil drillers and oil companies to execute and monitor contracts. And now there's Voyager. It wants to transform over 80% of global seaborne trade. Here's how it works. It's a cloud-based application where all parties work together at the same time, email and paperwork free. The goal is to manage and streamline workflow which boosts efficiency and reduces risk. Some of their clients include Equinor, Invista, and Lighthouse Chartering, and it has big expansion plans. I recently caught up with Matthew Costello and asked him how he's helping some of his customers. One of our companies that we're working with is uh, currently dealing with an issue around um, ETA variability. So they have a large production facility and data and information is coming into them through different formats around vessel arrivals. Yet certain times of the year they might have a average of a mean of 12 day delay with up to a 10 day standard deviation of when ships are going to arrive. So if you imagine you're trying to plan your inventory, your supply chain, your production and you have some ships coming coming in 20 days late, some ships coming in two days early and it's completely unpredictable. So with our application we are able to actually collect that data centrally um, from across the organization, uh, build machine learning algorithms to actually help them predict and optimize when those shipments are actually going to arrive. And that gives them far better reliability, uh, allows them to reduce their working capital, safety stocks, um, re results in a lot of reduced penalties, uh, demurrage mm. um, and some of the support services that go along with that. What what are some other things that you can do that you've noticed that are popular that really work? Yeah, so I think for a lot of companies it's also just having all of their information in one place globally. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these companies have very large distributed teams. Um, everything is sitting in silos, in inboxes, spreadsheets, and by all of a sudden making that data available all in one place across global organization, um, it makes that information accessible to departments um, within the organization that never really had a really good maritime data set that represented all of their fleet activity. What are you noticing trend wise in terms of like what's being shipped to who's doing the shipping, what areas short what? I mean, what, what are you seeing in the trend wise? Yeah, so especially out of the US, I think obviously the shale gas um, or the shale boom has produced a huge amount of excess um, product in the market. Um, so LNG is a really exciting place at the moment. So the LNG world has traditionally been from a shipping point of view very A to B. Mm -hmm. And now what we're starting to see as a lot more production comes online, um, people actually starting to to trade a lot of this product in the market while the cargo is on the ships. Now what that means is that operationally you have a far higher demand for being able to manage the variability hmm. and the sudden changes in complexity whereas normally it was very much just a bus service. So because basically you're not looking at long term supply agreements so you're looking at more like spot trading etc so they need more uh, flexibility? Yeah so we do spot trading but we can also manage the long term contracts as well. Mm -hmm. um, all of them equally benefit um, in from you know, having better visibility and better control on the voyage. Uh, what else, you know, what other trends are you noticing? Yeah, so I think on the technology side, what we are starting to see is companies gradually moving away from email. So if you look at the Fortune 500 right now, about 20% of them internally have already started to move internal communication away from email to things like Slack or Microsoft Teams. We think that this trend is going to continue within industry verticals, so shipping, transportation and commodities, where companies are going to want to start having that same experience of app-based communication with everyone they deal with in their network. Um, and what that is going to do is it's going to start bringing more and more people onto common vertically focused applications like Voyager um, to manage those communications. Yeah, how, uh, is there room for a lot of players in that though? Yeah, look, I think we'll start to see um, different platforms popping up servicing different areas of the market. So within the container transportation space, you have a lot of platforms coming up. Um, you may see specific applications appear for specific verticals or commodities. So maybe within the dry cargo space or within the bulk carrier space uh, or within the crude oil space.